Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo Thunderbolt 3 graphics dock. And this dock isn't much larger than many of the other docks we've looked at recently and it's got a bunch of ports that you can use on it. Uh, but inside is something a little different. It's got a GPU, a GTX 1050 from NVIDIA. And what that means is that if you've got an Ultrabook that doesn't have a graphics processor built into it, you can plug it into this when you're at your desk and be able to play some games perhaps or do some 3D modeling or something that you couldn't do all that well on just the Intel graphics that come baked in with most of those Ultrabooks. And the cool thing is this provides power to the laptop as well, along with some extra ports too. And we're going to be exploring how this thing works and see how it performs here in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Lenovo loaned this device to the channel. So when we're done with this, we send it back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own and no one has reviewed this video before I uploaded it. So let's get into it and see what this thing is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. It is very compact actually, considering it does have the GPU inside. Uh, so it is not all that larger than the other docks we have looked at that are also powered over Thunderbolt 3. Of interest here is that this one costs $399 right now, and that is roughly around what you might pay for a Thunderbolt dock without the GPU inside, maybe a little bit more, but not considerably so. So if you are in the market for one of these things, a little bit extra might get you a lot more. On the front here, you've got an audio output along with an input. This is a headphone microphone combo jack. It has its own audio circuitry inside, but I have found in the past and with this one as well that uh, if you've got a higher end laptop, your internal audio might sound a little better. We've got three USB ports on the front. Uh, one of them though, interestingly enough, is USB 2. Uh, the other two are USB 3. Uh, this port here will charge a device like a tablet or a phone even when there's no computer attached. So this is always live and able to charge up your devices. On the side here, you've got a uh, Kensington lock port here so you can lock it down on a desk. On the other side is the Thunderbolt connector for attaching it to your PC. Now I should note here that Thunderbolt and USB-C are not the same even though they do use the same connector. Uh, so Thunderbolt 3 is faster and compatible with USB-C, but if you have a laptop that does not have one of these little uh, lightning bolts next to the port, uh, this will likely not work with it. This will not work with any USB-C equipped device. It's only going to work with a Thunderbolt equipped device, and you'll need to make sure your device is compatible with Thunderbolt before you uh, buy this one. Now, like many of the docks we have looked at here on the channel, there is a rather large power supply here that goes with it. Uh, there's a good amount of cable length on this, so I think you should be able to locate this on the floor or something, but uh, just know you'll have a nice big power brick here because you need to power the laptop along with all of the functions of the dock, including its GPU. Uh, that power supply connects up to this yellow connector right there. You've got three display outputs here, so you can drive three displays off the dock simultaneously. Uh, it will support 4K, uh, but just know that this dock's GPU, the GTX 1050, is not known for uh, running 4K games at any decent performance. So you'll probably be running at 1080p, and you'll likely have some settings in the mid-range to hit the frame rates you're looking for. Uh, so although you can get uh, you know, 4K out for your uh, desktop and 2D applications, uh, 3D games are probably going to be better at 1080p. We'll look at a few of those in a few minutes. Here you've got gigabit ethernet for connecting it up to your local network and uh, kind of nice just to get all this stuff available to you with a single cable. Uh, there is no Thunderbolt 3 daisy chain port on this. Uh, many Thunderbolt 3 devices have another Thunderbolt port so you can keep attaching additional devices in a chain. Uh, this does not support that. So when you plug this thing in, you won't be able to uh, use any additional Thunderbolt devices off of that port. So just bear that in mind. And then here you've got some venting because there is a fan inside. You can probably see it underneath the grill at the bottom there. Uh, it needs this for the GPU. So you'll want to keep the bottom clear and the back of this clear as well. The fan is very quiet. In fact, I was noticing the laptop I was testing this with had a noisier fan than the dock has. Uh, but there will be a little fan running when you put that GPU under load. But uh, in my testing here, it's been very, very quiet. And we'll take a look at some of its thermal performance in uh, the video here 
here as we work our way through some of the other features of the dock. So let's get this thing hooked up and see how it works. All right, so we're going to be doing some testing today with a Lenovo T480. Uh, this one has that Thunderbolt 3 port right here. It also has a USB Type-C port right there. So you have to make sure you plug it into the right port in order for things to work. Now, you will be able to use this with uh, just about, I think, any 7th or 8th generation Intel-powered laptop that has the Thunderbolt 3 connector on it. You do have to get a driver from Lenovo. This is not a simple plug and play kind of device. There's a driver package that you download for this. And then uh, after you install that driver and plug it in, it starts working. Uh, this did not work the same way my Akidio Node eGPU setup did, the one that I reviewed a few months ago, where it just kind of got recognized by Windows and started working with an NVIDIA driver. Uh, this one is different. You are going to need to grab that package from Lenovo. And I really strongly urge you to buy Buy the dock from a place that offers returns without any headaches because it could be possible this just doesn't work with a particular configuration and uh, Lenovo is not supporting anything at the moment, at least at the time that I'm shooting this review, uh, that is not their Yoga 720 with the 8th generation processor built in. It's a very specific compatibility item here, but I do think it's compatible with more than that, including this T480 here. So we're going to plug in this cable first and uh, get everything booted up here. So you can see now that uh, we are plugged in. We just have to wait a second for everything to activate here, but uh, sure enough, there we go. We've got uh, this video now coming out of the dock that is hooked up here on the desk, and we're now using uh, that NVIDIA GPU to get us there. And if we pop into the GeForce experience here, you can see that it's recognizing that GTX 1050, and all seems good to go. However, I noticed the drivers are not the most recent drivers. And if we uh, go over here, you can see right now we're looking at a, a driver release date of December 7th of 2017. I went out to NVIDIA and downloaded drivers manually and tried to install those drivers. It did not recognize the GPU as something that was compatible with that driver package, even though I selected the driver package for the GTX 1050. Uh, so my feeling here is that you'll likely have to wait for Lenovo to get you updated driver packages to get your GPU driver up to date. And as it stands right now, we're about four months behind the most recent uh, GeForce driver using this dock. But it looks like, though, everything else is working as advertised, including the fact that our computer here, as you can see down at the bottom, uh, is charging through that single cable here. So we're getting everything we need uh, through this one cable, including power. Now, the dock will provide about 65 watts of power to the laptop. If you have a laptop that needs more than 65 watts of power, you'll have to continue using the power brick that it came with. But I think for most Ultrabooks, which is the target of this device, you're going to be fine with the single cable. Let's take a look now at a game. Uh, we've got GTA 5 loaded up here, and I'll pop over to my graphics settings. You'll see that we have 4 gigs of available video memory, which is good because we have... Uh, tested computers with this GPU inside, and those only had two gigs in some cases. So nice to have a little bit more for video RAM available to us. And you can see what I have for settings here. I kind of kept everything relatively low, but I was able to get uh, this to run at a consistent 60 frames per second or a little better. Uh, GTA 5 does vary quite a bit as you're playing. Uh, different scenes have different requirements on the CPU or the GPU, but generally we went from uh, maybe getting 25 or 30 frames per second on the Intel hardware at the absolute lowest settings to being able to get a much better quality image at 60 frames per second plugged into the dock here. So a dramatic improvement when you have an external GPU that you can run with with your laptop when you're at home and it really looks and plays uh, quite nicely on here. Let's take a look at something else. So here is The Witcher, and I'm getting frame rates at low settings around 50 to 60 frames per second. It'll occasionally drop off a little bit. I should note here that the T480 laptop is running with an Intel i7-8650, which is an 8th generation quad-core chip. So uh, these games certainly make use of both the CPU and the GPU. And as you'll see in a few minutes when we run some benchmarks, the performance on uh, the dock here is the same as it would be if this GPU was built into the laptop. So overall, not bad. But again, it's not a very high-powered GPU compared to what else might be out there. So games like The Witcher, you'll run, run in low settings, but uh, they still look pretty nice to me. So here is Street Fighter V, and we're getting a solid 60 frames per second here in its default arcade mode. 
Typically what happens with this game is if you're on an ultra book, you'll need to load it up in the low spec mode and it doesn't look as good. Uh, this looks great, plays very, very smoothly here and uh, no complaints whatsoever through the dock. By the way, you might be noticing some compression artifacts on uh, my capture footage here. This is just the result of the video capture hardware I'm using at the moment. Uh, you won't see those artifacts on your display while you're playing. Uh, so overall, it looks like we're getting some pretty decent gaming performance out of this. Let's take a look now at some benchmarks as well as its thermal performance. Now when we plug the dock into the laptop a little while ago, you'll recall seeing that the display was mirrored on the internal laptop display in addition to the monitor here. And uh, that is the default setting and that does impact performance slightly. Uh, so we're going to pull up the 3D Mark Time Spy test and you'll see that when we had the internal display disabled, we got slightly better performance. Uh, so when we had that single display going, we got a score of 1,736, uh, which isn't bad and actually puts this right on par with the Yoga 7 2015 we looked at recently that was powered by the same GPU and the prior generation processor. Uh, so overall, we're getting performance that I would expect to get uh, out of a GTX 1050 here. So all in very good performance. I also ran the 3D Mark stress test to see how well this does under load. We got a passing score there of 98.4%. And you can see what both our CPU and GPU temperatures were in that test. And I think one advantage here of using the dock is that uh, you've got your CPU and GPU in two different boxes that are cooling themselves independently, uh, which does allow it to maintain its performance under load and over time. Time. So I'm not seeing any real uh, drop off in performance here on the dock. And again, uh, you will hear the fan, but it's not uh, overly noisy either. So all in, it looks like it's performing quite well. And it's a, a good pairing, I think, with an Ultrabook. Now, some viewers were asking whether or not this would work with the Mac. And I did give it a pretty decent try on the Mac, but it does not work. Of course, I just tried plugging it in initially. Uh, the Mac did charge off of this, so it was able to get some of the functionality, but the GPU part did not work. Uh, that includes plugging it into OS X High Sierra, which has eGPU support. I even went out to eGPU.io, which is a great website for uh, eGPUs, and I installed some of the scripts that they have to get NVIDIA external GPUs working on the Mac, and this one just would not get going with it. In fact, it was uh, resetting and kernel panicking my Mac when I did uh, get all of those scripts installed on there. So overall, I think this is going to be limited to uh, just Windows 10 devices that are compatible with it. And Lenovo is being very careful about what they're guaranteeing compatibility with. So again, I would recommend getting this from a place that you can return it to should it not work. Because I found even with the Lenovo X1 Carbon, the brand new one, uh, with all the drivers up to date, the drivers installed for the dock, every time I plug the dock in, it just reset itself. Um, so you will have some compatibility issues perhaps, and uh, you want to make sure that you have an out should this just not work with your particular computer. But uh, when it does work, it seems to be delivering the performance you would have if you had a 1050 GPU built inside, and it doesn't take up all that much room on your desk, as you can see here. Uh, that other eGPU we tested a few months ago is huge, about the size of a PC itself. So it was nice to see some other options here in a much smaller form factor. So I hope that this is the beginning of many more products that do this kind of thing. And uh, when it does work, it does work exceptionally well. Uh, but there are some catches and caveats here that I hope this review would, uh, will give you some insight into before you buy. If you have any more questions, leave them down below in the comment stream. And until next time, this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.